Welcome to day nine of uh, 30 lessons I have learned from 30 years of ministry. And what I want to focus on today is that the challenge of success surpasses the challenge of adversity. In other words, people who go through things, they struggle and say, well, I'm trying to struggle to get a breakthrough in ministry. And they feel that that's the most challenging thing in ministry. That once I get a breakthrough and I begin to succeed, then, you know, I can deal with other challenges. Now, let me say this here. The challenges you have um, when you have a breakthrough in ministry will surpass and outweigh in every measure challenges that you will have while you are in that phase there of being preserved by the power of God on salvation that is to be revealed. And one great temptation about success is you can easily get distracted. In other words, you can be distracted from your purpose. You can be distracted from the very reason why God blessed you. And the uh, the challenge of distraction is greater than the challenge of adversity. Now, I want to speak in particular about one thing that you sh trap you shouldn't fall into. And I call it the trap of overcompensation. You see, you may overcompensate yourself for the quote and unquote success that you have achieved. In a sense that when you start out, and this is applicable also in entrepreneurship, you come to a point where you literally are struggling. For example, a person starts out in ministry like I did, and I literally, not in any figurative way, literally I lived out of my office. In other words, my clothes were there. I did have an apartment, but because I really had no time, I was on just sat in my office and sick in the face of God. So my clothes were there. So if you walked into the office, you will see my clothes arranged, all right, right beside my office table. You will literally see it there. And um, I will go into um, the general, I mean, the church um, restroom. Is every, that's where I, uh, I had my bath. That's where I did everything. So literally, so you go through that and you're alone pushing that. And then you get to a point where after some time, Let's say after a few years, you get a remarkable breakthrough in the ministry. And you can justify this and you can get away with it. If you throw it in the face of anybody, you will, you know, you will steal the people. Uh, as, as, as Caleb said, they'll be still and they will not be able to answer. And so you will win any argument by telling people how much you personally suffered and endured to get into that space there. And so the temptation now becomes that now that I, all right, paid that price, uh, nobody was there when I was opening up the doors of church, cleaning the floors myself, that's how you say it, and arranging the chairs all by myself and praying and doing all of that, then why then can I not enjoy some of the benefits, that's the way you frame it here, of the success that or the blessings that God has given? And you are justified in that. But you've got to understand that there are boundaries. And one thing that is important is the reputation. When I talk about reputation now, I'm talking about what the scripture actually says in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 7, when it talks about appointment of people into positions of leadership within the church. It says that person must have a good report with those who are without. In other words, it has to be somebody, as it says in the book of Romans, who has provided things that are honest in the sight of men. So it's not just that you did things that were honest in the sight of God, but you went about and conducted yourself in a way that you, you know, positioned yourself and you did things in a way that it was honest also in the sight of men. So, for example, I used to say this when I was on campus. I said, if a person puts, hides the offerings 
of your ministry, or well, then was a campus fellowship, fellowship in a certain place within the room so that nobody can take it and the person hides it there. But at the same time, it's the same place where they hide their own money. So somebody comes in to ask for money, all right, or somebody comes in to ask for money for the fellowship and the person goes to that particular place and takes out money out of the fellowship, all right, account there, the money that was there and gives it to the person. Somebody else comes in and says, oh, come and pay for this particular thing you bought and then goes to that same place now, but he's taking that money out of his own, all right, money, which is beside that which uh, belongs to the fellowship. Now, a person who looks at it from just looking at it and casually observing that will look like the person has taken money from the same place. In other words, he's using the money of the fellowship, right, to pay for their own personal belongings. Now, that person has not been wise. In other words, they are honest in the sight of God. God sees that this person is honest, but they have not provided things that are honest in the sight of men. Now, what that does is that it will affect a person who sits down to listen. It will affect their conscience and they develop a perception. In fact, also in their giving, it will affect the way and manner in which they give. All right. So that work because they believe that there is really no proper integrity. Now, there is integrity. It's just that the person hasn't arranged the thing and put the right organization to show that this is the integrity here. Now, God knows the person has not stolen, but people around think that this person is dipping their hands into the teal of the ministry. And so that becomes, all right, foolishness on the part of that person and could hurt uh, that person's work and the acceptability of the message of that particular individual and the reception of people of that particular ministry. I just say that on a small scale, but we can now put it. So what happens many times is when there's overcompensation there, the person no longer has any form of boundaries there. You cross those boundaries there and you can slip into what is called lasciviousness there, which means that you can even get into a place where you can become covetous. So you have to be careful that you don't overcompensate yourself, right, for the, the work that you have done in the past. And the issue that you must have at the back of your mind is that the true reward for anything you do on this earth is that which God will give you in eternity. Remember that Paul said, he said, if in this world we have hope only, he said, then we have all men most miserable. In other words, our reward cannot be for the sacrifice that you'll be called upon to make cannot be justified by anything that is earthly. And you have to have that mindset. So you don't want to do anything there that can affect, all right, receptivity of people that can affect also. Now, as you begin to grow and begin to develop, you come to a place where people actually think that, look, that's better, that people think inside their hearts that, look, you are on the, on the recompense there for the things that you have done and all of that. It's a better place to be than to be in that place where you have overcompensated yourself. And the second thing is that you can get distracted completely by the new possibilities that emerge uh, within your own environment is one thing not to have the resources so you cannot, for, for example, travel. Is another thing to have all the resources there and then there is that you can, all right, live at any time you want to live or travel or whatever it is there and you can justify that. This is what I'm trying to say here by talking about the years or the time in which you sacrificed and carried chairs on your head and did all of that. So there has to be that balance there in this compensation here so that you do not defeat or, you know, hinder what the future holds for you because you are in a journey. You just must have, may have finished the first leg of the race. There's still the second leg. There's still the third leg. There's still the fourth leg. And when you begin to overcompensate yourself, 
all right, for things. And I repeat this, it's an argument that you can win easily because of the level of sacrifice that you've made. And many people that may even be talking were not even present when that degree of sacrifice was being made. So probably they came as a result of the sacrifice that was made and the breakthrough that was experienced. And therefore, you know, you can, you, you will win the argument. So the question is not winning the argument. The question is looking at it properly with the eyes of eternity that the Bible says we shouldn't put a stumbling block in the way of any person. It says in them receiving ministry from you as a person. So I want to share on that today as a lesson that I've learned, the lesson of overcompensation. In other words, there are boundaries and you have to think through on it yourself and find out where the balance actually exists. In other words, that even in the success there, there are more resources that are available to you as an individual than that which you are demonstrating in your own personal life. And once you get that balance and you ask God for wisdom on this so that you don't affect, and you see that Paul was a minister that did not take certain privileges that were even lawful for him to get because he did not want to undermine the ministry that God had given to him. In other words, he could have argued it. He could have won the argument. He could have substantiated some of those things even from the scriptures. But he chose, all right, to live below a certain level in order for the gospel not to be hindered. Now, I'm not saying that you should now be in bondage to people where people now um, want to take control of your life and consider you to be their servant. When I mean their servant now, that is you are serving their own interest. You are a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are not sent to go and please men, but you are sent, all right, to serve them. In other words, if it is, if you, if, if God shows you that this is what will should be done and through that the highest good for the people will be achieved by that decision and they don't understand that decision and they are not happy with that decision but that is what will bring about their highest good in life then you obey what god is saying to you as a person even if people do not agree with you in the future we'll talk about this one of lessons learned However, what you are doing must be in the interest, collective interest of the people in terms of um, putting them in a better position. They may in future understand, some may never understand it, but you know from your heart you have done this in service to humanity, even though they may not fully understand that. So I get that. But when it comes to overcompensation, it means you've gotten to a place where you feel that uh, the rewards of spiritual sacrifices, all right, can be equated to material things. And if you think that way, uh, then you have made a costly mistake in ministry and in life. I hope you gain something from that. God bless you and we'll continue tomorrow. Mm -hmm.